Hello and welcome. Before we get into this episode review, there are a couple of quick house cleaning things we need to take care of. The first one is, yes, I know, we said we were going to do badge reviews. I can't just not talk about the new episode when it comes out. I love the Magnus Protocol. I love the Magnus Archives. I love this episode in particular. And I couldn't wait two more weeks to talk about it when two more episodes had come out. So we're just going to do episode reviews every week. I know it's a lot of videos, but hopefully you're all excited for it with me because I love talking about this series. That leads to the second thing, which is that I love the discussions that we have and the outpouring of support we've gotten in talking about the Magnus Protocol. I appreciate all of you so, so much. A lot of great things have been pointed out in there that I missed, and one of those was the ARG that I didn't even know existed when I made that first video. I've since dug into it. There's a little bit more digging I need to do still, but I think I've got the, the gist of it. I think I've got most of it, and there's absolutely things that are now from the ARG that are going to be brought up moving forward. The third and final thing that I wanted to point out here is... If you're somebody that has not seen the Magnus Archives yet and is starting with the Magnus Protocol, these reviews are still safe for you. About a third of the way through the video, I'll put up the spoiler tag, and that is your cue that you should go if you don't want to be spoiled on stuff for the Magnus Archives. But after you've listened to the Magnus Archives, you could always come back if you wanted to. Uh, I want to keep doing that until we get to like the season reviews at least, because I think it's important that there are definitely going to be people that start here don't start with the Magnus Archives. But if you're listening to this and you haven't yet heard the Magnus Archives, you should go back and check out TMA first before you continue with TMP because Magnus Archives and the Magnus Protocol are intrinsically tied and this episode gives us even more information about that. So, without any further ado, let's get into this. Episode 3, Putting Down Roots. And I do want to mention here that I noticed uh, some comments about how the codes got cut off. That was my fault. I looked away from the noise gate. I've widened the noise gate a little bit, and I'm gonna I'm gonna focus in on it while I'm reading these. So the code for this one is CAT two C eight one seven five dash zero three zero four two zero zero nine dash two two zero one two zero two four infection. And it has some other tags like arboreal, and we'll get to that as well. And there's a couple really interesting things from a Magnus Protocol perspective mentioned here that I'm going to get back into once we're in the spoiler section. But the JMJ error, that came up in the ARG because of the hacker JMJ. I have a big theory about that we're going to get into when we get to the spoiler section. But just keep that in mind. Uh, Colin here is acting like Freddy's alive almost, saying that she shouldn't be calling it Freddy, talking about Alice, and that Alice should not be uh, treating Freddy this way, that... Freddy is a machine, and it would be very bad. And I quote, Do you have any idea what will happen if this thing finally managed to extinct itself? But it seems like Freddy is fighting itself. I have another theory for when we get into the spoiler section, but, you know, just keep that in mind. And our story today in this episode is a homicide report from uh, March. I had to count out the dates. I'm losing my mind. March 4th or... You know, could be April 3rd. I, I know some countries use months and dates backwards uh, from what we do in the U.S. And it's probably April 3rd now that I say that. Anyway, in Kent, of uh, Dr. Samuel Weber and the belongings that he had that were found in a water damage briefcase partially buried and penetrated by moldy roots. This one is already special to me. Not just because I've listened to it three times over the course of getting things done at the house today, but also because this is such an interesting way to tell this story. In the Magnus Archives, and I'm not going to spoil the episode for you here, but in the Magnus Archives, we get the perspective of a man that has basically no regard for human life whatsoever and is willing to step over anybody, and he winds up tied up with... Uh, a witch, and again, I'm not going to spoil anything else for you there. That's why I'm going to leave it there. This reminded me a lot of that. This is a man that has done something terrible, as it seems like he's killed his wife and maybe her lover. We only get his word for it, and obviously he's a little bit untrustworthy as a narrator, but we only have his perspective for it, and it's kind of chilling to have his perspective being, there was a guy that looked at me a little bit too long on the tube earlier. Does he know? I need to go into hiding. They'll stop looking for me. Like, it's all clinical in a way that it's horrifying when you realize how much he claims to care about his wife later on. 
and the way what he has done to her right so he chooses to hide out in an overgrown garden that has taken over a bombed out church and i have thoughts on that as well that i'll bring up in a little while uh, in the spoiler section everything from this point is horrifying and satisfying and wonderful because this man is still a murderer but it's also terrifying to think about the idea of your body changing and you not being able to control it and it turning into something that you don't want it to turn into but you start to slip away as another part of you wants it and won't listen to you anymore wonderful this is not just an amazing episode in my mind this has quickly become one of my favorites and absolutely my favorite in protocol this was written by a guest writer as we find out at the end of the episode and i think they did a great job there's a couple little things here and there where i'm like hey maybe you know this is all supposed to be written in the form of a journal maybe towards the end when we've already heard that his hand's starting to get stiff he's probably not going to be able to write anymore maybe it could have been done some other way but ultimately i think it was mostly a success i really really and it, more than mostly it was very much a success i just think there's that one little stipulation that kind of took me out of it towards the end but let's talk about it he scratches himself on the way in to this garden and it develops into a wound a rash that develops into sores that develops into him becoming a tree and the process of turning into a tree in many ways doesn't sound horrifying when you just say and then they turned into a tree but it's the way it's done here it's the rash that they scratch and become sores that gets infested by bugs that say or as dr weber says uh that seem to enjoy feasting on the wounds it's the buds that come off the rash it's the polyp it's the lethargy it's the not knowing where how long he's been down there in the dark and the dark in the underbrush. It's when he finally tries to leave the underbrush and he pushes his way through the bushes again and he's still in the garden. And the very scent of the jasmine when it reaches it wounds him somehow. And that is probably more because of the fact that he killed his wife and it wounds him because it reminds him of his wife. But, you know, even he considers it could be psychosomatic. But anyway... As it goes, it gets worse and worse and worse to the point where at one point he's considering breaking some of his own bones with a rock. If the infection reaches there, he can't remember if he even did push his way through those bushes. And then Maddie is there and she's talking to him. She's trying to help him and she's telling him she'll go get supplies and ultimately she leads him to a place where he turns into a tree and in his own words deep inside there's a small part of him that still shakes with terror but he doesn't see there's so many little moments in here of the the, the coiled hair thin translucent uh, strands of uh maddie telling him that she found a spot where he can stand in the sun and feel the wind and he talks about how much he misses the sun and he it's been so dark of course everything's been dark because he killed his wife for maybe sleeping with another guy his estranged wife it seems like but realistically he's not a trustworthy narrator he mentions at one point that she'll talk to anybody even gerald andrews and did she even do anything with the guy or was she just talking to him? He mentions at one point that he doesn't know what he would do if they grew apart because he's been coming home from work and just going straight to sleep. And he just doesn't know what he would do if he lost her. But of course we do know because heard it kills her and he kills Gerald. He refers to their medical records as star cross lovers, but there's something terrible and terrifying about a doctor having medical records of people that he just killed. Like, how did he even do it? We don't know, but it's terrifying to hear. And then this idea of his consciousness slowly slipping away as he becomes this tree and just being like, yeah, I don't know what I'd do if I lost her, but it's a good thing she's here with me and I'm not alone anymore. And I'm also not alone because I have all these insects with me. Isn't nature fascinating? Like, bro, you're falling apart here, man. And 
again, it's his own actions that caused this, right? If he hadn't killed them, he wouldn't have had to rush through the bushes. He wouldn't have gotten scratched. He wouldn't have gotten infected. But there is just something absolutely terrifying. I love terror. I love horror. I love the Magnus Archives and the Magnus Protocol because it, it, it snatches that little bit of peace in my heart that I have when I'm talking about horror and goes, ooh, you love this, don't you? Let me just give you a new bit of it to put back in there. And it just, the idea of slowly turning into a tree is absolutely terrifying. But of course, he doesn't feel all of that terror as his mind is slowly pulled away by the fact that he's turning into a tree. I'm recur like just recursive going through motions here talking about the same stuff. So let's just move on. We have a nice little callback here as Alice tries to get Sam to call upper management and Sam says he doesn't want Colin to feed him his own keyboard. But then Alice says she was born down here and she's going to die down here. And if that's not foreshadowing, I don't know what is, which is a shame because I like Alice. I feel like if you're working with Alice and Alice likes you, you have the best person to work with. And if Alice doesn't, you made a mistake somewhere. But we're going to go into spoilers, and if you're somebody that has only listened to the Magnus Protocol so far, you should definitely click off here. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you. Um, because we're going to talk spoilers. All right, let's talk JMJ to start things off with. So when I first listened to it, I was trying to figure out, JMJ, is that like a... a what kind of file extension would that be? You know, it's not like a bitmap because J it ends in a J. What What is that going to come out to? And then the second listen, my brain went, oh, you idiot. It's John Martin Jonah. John Martin Jonah. And then having dug into the ARG, JMJ hacked the system and added a bunch of alchemical symbols and changed some stuff. And those alchemical symbols are probably the ones for the Philosopher's Stone. Is Jonah trying to come back? Because <laughs> if it's a JMJ error, then are they fighting amongst themselves? Colin mentions that the system is trying to extinct itself and throw itself into oblivion every time he turns it on. Is it John and Martin fighting Jonah? Are they using the statements to try and spread the news or is Jonah forcing them to read them? There's, oh, there's so much. There's so much. And then we get into this statement itself and we have also just real quick would call in statement of what, you know, do you have any idea what will happen if the system extincts itself? Does, will that free them? Will Jonah be free again? Anyway, we get this story, and at first, I was pretty positive this was going to be a story about uh, the buried, right? When we get into a garden, I was like, yeah, here we go. This is going to be the buried, uh, which, again, we don't even know if the fears are here in that aspect or anything like that, right? However, over the course of this episode, I got more and more convinced that it really is a fusion, and I could be wrong. There was somebody in the comment section. Hold on, I'll get the name. It was Fennel in the comment section who said that their theory is that the fears have fused, but it's not that they fused into a new entity, it's that they fused back into the original fear. And I love that. Because in my mind, when they all fused together, if that's what had happened, that's sort of what they already would have been doing anyway. I thought it was going to be a new creature, but it would absolutely make sense for it to be the original fear. So... This, in my mind, only continues to spread that. We have a lot of different aspects here. We have, of course, the lonely, uh, hiding out alone and, and hearing, desperately wishing to hear a voice that is already gone because you killed her, dude. We have the buried, digging in the roots, you know. We have the vast. When you leave the garden, there's just more garden. We have the spiral and getting lost in the garden, right? And each of these could be whatever, but I also thought of the dark because the sun won't seem to rise. There's also a bombed out church there. Is that Maxwell Rayner's church? And then of course we have the insects. We, do we need to get into that one? That one seems pretty clear to me. Uh, and there's also just a little bit of the flesh in there, right? It's like the, the skin sloughs off like a tomato. It just, it feels, it really feels to me like they're all coming together. And it could be 
I could be very wrong because we know from the end, this is spoilers for the very end of the Magnus Archives, they kind of always were together, right? But it really feels to me like this is all of them combined and they're feeding on people in different ways. And if we're in a universe where the fears have moved and they've been brought together, who knows? Who knows what they could do? Then, of course, towards the end there, we get the, the reference from Sam about keyboard, eating his own keyboard, which we know uh, because of episode, which I have a comment on this too, episode 65, Binary with Sergei Oshanka, thanks to uh, Magic Kazog for reminding me about that one from the last episode. Neither of us knew when you did that, I'm sure, that it was going to tie into this episode, but that's wonderful. Um, please leave your comments in the comment section down below. I, I absolutely love reading them all. Um, wonderful little comment, but all I could think when Alice said that she was going to die down here was of Sasha. And so, if it isn't that they're all combined, it could be that some of them combined, right? Like, maybe they didn't all come together to be one thing, but now the buried and all of the insects and all of that has come together, right? Possibility, the hive and, and you know, possibility, sure. But it could also just be that this is a flesh episode because his skin falls away, his skin gets infected, you know, and he murdered them and we don't know how and that could tie in as well. And it could also be something new. We could have new fears that we don't even know about yet. So I don't want to I don't want to say this is for sure this, right? I've done that last time and other people were like, "Well, yeah, you said it was this, but it could also be this one." It's like that's very true. There's an, even a little bit of an aspect of the hunt here because they they find his uh his briefcase and it's been buried and penetrated by the roots where he it would have been close to him when he died and it would have been shoved in there but they were hunting him when he went to hide you know i personally believe they've all fused together into one entity whether the original fear or something new I can't say whether they're under i don't think they're under jonah's power but some people i've seen in the comments have said they think that they are uh i believe jonah is currently fighting John and Martin, and they are trying to contain him inside the system. But for all I know, John and Martin could be trying to use the system to warn Sam and Alice and Colin and all the rest about this system, about these fears, about these things that are happening. One last thing I wanted to mention was with the ARG, with the mention of Robert Smirk. If this bombed out church was also built by Smirk, then that could explain why when you go through the hedge, there's more hedge. But also the current OIAR office, I'm really proud of myself. I had that off the top of my head. I didn't have to look that up. I went to go look it up and I already got it by the time I said it. Anyway, the current OIAR office was built by Robert Smirk. I love this series. I can't wait for more. We got every episode every week. That's all we got right now, but I cannot wait to take this journey with all of you and I hope you'll stick with me for it. If you're really opposed to individual episode reviews and you'd rather have like a longer every five episode reviews, let me know. But otherwise, I'm going to keep doing these episode reviews because I love doing them uh, and I can't just not talk about it. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Is there anything specific you thought of that I missed? And uh, just a quick heads up, thanks to the comments for letting me know uh, on the Magnus Archives way back when, if you listen to the episode, you should also read the transcript because you might catch some stuff that you missed. I've been Trey. This has been the Full Spectrum. And remember to always enjoy the Full Spectrum that the Magnus Protocol has to offer. <laughs>